What's up, potential DevOps engineers? Welcome, welcome to ClearDesk. My name is Syed, and I'm an IT enterprise architect, DevOps engineer, and I've been in the industry for a little over 20 years. So in this video, I'm gonna give you some pro tips as to the AWS Certified DevOps Engineer Professional Certification. Yeah, that's a mouthful, right? But we're gonna talk about it, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna give you some tangible tips, some pro tips, also about the exam itself and how you should be preparing and of course what it takes to become a DevOps engineer in AWS of course. So let's dive right in without further ado and take a look at what the AWS Certified DevOps Professional Certification is all about. Welcome everybody. We're gonna talk about the AWS Certified DevOps Engineer Professional Certification today. So this credential helps organizations identify and develop talent you know, with critical skills you know, in developing cloud initiatives. So earning this certification professional validates the ability to automate the testing and deployment of the AWS infrastructure and applications on the cloud. So what I've noticed in the, in the exam itself is that it doesn't really just test your knowledge on AWS, but your ability to design and create a highly available, scalable, fault-tolerant, and self-healing system. But it's also meant to test how native you are to the cloud. So what do I mean by this? means that the exam is long and tiring, right? So about three, three and a half hours with 75 scenario-based questions, long answers, and they all look the same, right? So after about 40 questions or so, your brain starts to melt down and it hurts when you try to think and analyze all these answers, leaving with you with the only option is your intuition to eliminate all the answers until you're left with the remaining correct answers, which satisfies the conditions of the question. So in order to you know, do all of this, you have to be familiar with AWS like a fish in the ocean, basically a cloud native. Even if you have experience working with AWS, right? Even if it is two years and plus in many cases, you do not really get the chance to get, you know, get to know all the services to, you know, that you need to know to pass the exams. So most of the times, a set of services that you use are only limited to a company level because you'll be only working with two or three tools, for example. So my strategy was to take, let's say, a simple Hello Work app and then make it, you know, self-healing, disaster recovery readiness, a cross-region, right? So you need to have two or three AWS accounts if you need to attempt the DevOps professional certifications and just get in there and then you know, start doing multiple projects, right? So I recommend about at least two new accounts. Yeah, it's gonna take you some, some cost maybe, right, that are attached to it. So search for other additional blog posts on the net, for example, what others say, watch reInvent 300 and 400 videos, right, that AWS has. Read the AWS blog posts, or especially the DevOps blog posts, listen to podcasts, and use all other resources that are out there. So what's the motivation, guys? Why do you want to do all of this, right? Well, AWS is certainly by far one of the biggest names in cloud computing. And according to the latest Gartner report, the research, the share, it is definitely, definitely the leader and leaving others far behind. So the demand is out there, guys, right? So at least 40, 50 percent, you know, demand is higher than other cloud platforms. That's what AWS is looking for also, right? So you need to know compliance, security policies, you know, disaster recovery, and so on. So many things have been said about benefits, and I'm just gonna add one that has not been mentioned. So for example, while you're preparing for the exam, afterwards you'll be left with enormous amount of knowledge, right? And how Amazon engineers solve problems, what you know, cloud engineering looks like, good engineering ethic, how to design documentable solutions, and how to document your, you know, your, your infrastructure, your code. So another very important pro tip that you will only use cloud formation and AWS CLI, but pretty much not using the, the GUI console, right? And this is important because if you use a management console, you're probably gonna miss half of the important options you need to know. So the management console takes care of creating you know, all dependencies by one tick of a checkbox 
and the settings and it does it all for you, right? But as a DevOps engineer, you need to go back and do it all by yourself, hands-on. So definitely use CloudFormation templates, definitely use the AWS Cloud CLI. So that will give you some solid and you know, make you more confident. So I can't emphasize how critical this is to understand how services are all connected to each other and how they communicate. So who should take this exam, right? Well, AWS Certified DevOps Engineer Professional Exam is intended for individuals with at least two years or more worth of experience in provisioning, operating, and managing AWS environments. So before you take the exam, you know, definitely it is recommended that you have experience in developing, you know, code in one high-level programming languages, maybe fundamentals of Python, right? Building highly automated infrastructure, and of course, working with operating systems. Also understand modern development in operations, processes, and methodologies. Also the ability to, you know, manage and implement continuous, you know, delivery systems in AWS. And of course, ability to automate the security controls, governance processes, compliance validations in AWS. You also need to have the ability to you know, develop monitoring, metrics, and logging systems in AWS. So what is considered out of scope? What you really don't need to know about this certification, right? Or you don't need to remember. So it's really uh, many, many things that you really don't have to go and, and get into. So make sure you stay focused. So I'm going to give you some of these items that are out of scope. For example, advanced networking, advanced routing algorithms, failover technique, you know, or deep level security recommendations for developers. Database query and performance optimizations is out of scope. Full stack application code development and is also out of scope, right? Normalizations of data schemes is out of the scope. Key tools like technologies, Let's take a look at those because this is really important, right? So I'm going to give you a list of now, the list of all the tools and technologies that could appear on the exam, or they do, right? And of course, it's important to know all of them, but if you stay focused, you understand the main theme of the exam, it's easier. So let's take a look at these tools and technologies so that it's easier for you to prepare. Now, AWS services are certainly grouped together according to primary functions. So while some of these technologies are likely to be covered more than others in the exam, the order and placement you know, is, is important too, right? So you understand which is the high priority service and tool to look at, which is the low priority service and tool to look at. So code repository, automation, best practices, deployment, requirements, hybrid deployments, auto scaling, metrics, right? Alarms, monitoring, logging, um, you know, ACL, security group design, implementation, operational best practices, rollback procedures, green and blue deployments. These are all the important tools and services that you need to know if you are you know, willing to take the DevOps or AWS certified DevOps professional examination. Well, typically, like you know, I mentioned earlier, it takes about two years worth of experience. But then again, keep this in mind, and I'm gonna highlight it again. Most experience that we have or we gain within a company, for example, are limited to those tools that the company allows us to use. So for example, if the company is using Heroku, if the company is using Terraform, if the company is using AWS, right? or maybe just infrastructure. So you'll be limited to just part of that AWS ecosystem. They're not gonna give you perhaps access or it'll be not part of your job. So for DevOps engineer, yes. Go back home, create two accounts and start learning. And that's the best way. So coupled with your existing experience within the company, as well as your own efforts, will definitely, definitely lead you to pass this exam. So in this video, I just wanted to cover what AWS Certified DevOps Professional Examination is all about. Um, and not just the examination, the knowledge you gain is just absolutely tremendous. And for myself, for example, it really helped me to jump into a different cloud runner. So for example, after the AWS DevOps Engineer, now is Azure DevOps Engineer. So it's much easier, right? Because Azure is almost like 90% similar to AWS, just the names are different, right?
like blob storage versus S3 storage, right, and so on. So go check out my videos on, on the differences between AWS and Azure. So once you get to this level, then things are pretty much easier because you have a whole breadth of knowledge and expertise, hands-on, again, cloud formation and CLI. So try to use, not use the management console, but if you're starting off, of course, let's say you're jumping into AWS as a cloud practitioner or a solutions architect, yeah, you can use some of those. But as you grow, I mean, two years worth of experience minimum will definitely, definitely lead you to hands-on or to leave the management console at some point or some stage. All right, hope this helps. Let me know if you have any questions, post your comments right here in the comments below and be sure to like, comment and subscribe and the bell notification so you get notified every single time there is a latest breaking news, resources so you can make informed decisions. My name is Syed, thank you for watching and I will see you guys next time.